Ladies and gentlemen on the Shred Gaming Center.com video, NVIDIA have finally confirmed many of the leaked details concerning the Pascal architecture of GPUs. For example, the fact that it will be using high bandwidth memory too. Now, just so we're all up to speed, the Pascal architecture is of course a successor to Maxwell. Maxwell is the architecture behind such GPUs as, let's say, the GTX 980 Ti. I would like to thank uh, a chap on Facebook, his name is Ryan, he actually posted a link to this, I somehow missed it. So um, this information actually comes to us from NVIDIA's discussion of details over at the um, GPU technology conference over in Japan. So as one would expect, the GPU is indeed being manufactured by TSMC, known of course as Taiwanese Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, on naturally the 16NM FinFET process. It is worth noting that FinFET, just so you're um, aware, FinFET means 3D transistors compared to the plainer 2D transistors that we're all used to seeing in a traditional manufacturing. But there are some notes which you might um, find rather interesting, specifically regarding memory sizes. So it has been touted that Pascal will bring up the support of HBM all the way up to 32 gigabytes. That's a lot of memory, if you think about it. 32 gigabytes of HBM2. But that might not happen in reality. Now, the reasons behind this are quite simple. It really depends upon what memory vendors, for example, Samsung, manage to actually wrangle out of their, of their own processors. Now, this basically means what yields can they get, because obviously if the yields are bad, or they don't feel that they can manufacture these in sufficient and, I guess you could say, um, cheap enough quantities, it, it won't make sense, so NVIDIA would have to stick just to 16 gigabytes. So it's really down to the memory technology in 2016, rather than what NVIDIA themselves would like to see. Now what this would mean, however, is that you will indeed be seeing 16 gigabytes of HBM2, but that memory will indeed be running up to one terabyte per second in bandwidth. That's a ridiculous amount of bandwidth. I would just like to point out that a lot of GPUs now, you know, you're looking at 200, 300, 400 gigabytes per second. So you're looking at way over double what current GPUs normally sport. And even AMD's uh, Fury X, for the sake of argument, only manages half of the bandwidth that uh, the Pascal range and indeed AMD's own Arctic Islands next year will indeed be uh, featuring. Now, this is going to be rather impressive, but the absolute insanity here is that internally, the GPU itself surpasses over 2 terabytes per second of memory bandwidth. So, I just want you to think about that for a second. 2 terabytes per second. NVIDIA are probably proudest of NVLink, which is going to be a replacement of the PCIe current technology that we're using at the moment. In 2015, PCI3 is a thing, it's the current standard of technology, and it provides around 16 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. NVLink pushes that all of the way up to 80 gigabytes per second. Now, it is important to realize that this is probably not going to be on a desktop in your home anytime soon. NVIDIA's Mark Hamilton said the following, using 3D memory, not only does memory capacity will go up, but memory bandwidth will go up significantly. With a much faster GPU and higher memory bandwidth, the existing interconnects and the server are just plain outdated. So we had to develop our own interconnect technology called NVLink, five times faster than existing technology. Essentially, what he's saying is that the convoy can only sail as fast as the slowest ship, and memory bandwidth is becoming increasingly critical as obviously we go we go with either higher um, number of processes in the system, we increase the core count in other words, or clock speeds go up or whatever else. Naturally, something has to give it. In this case, memory bandwidth across the entire system is becoming increasingly critical. At the moment, however, we all know that, well, many people know that Pascal is the interim step between Maxwell and Volta. Just for your references, 
Volta was originally supposed to be the direct successor of uh, Maxwell, but a series of delays struck NVIDIA, and that's why we have Pascal coming out now. So, we know less about Volta. We do know that originally Volta was supposed to have HPM2 and all these other pieces of technology, but, as I said, it was hit with delays. So now, Pascal is going to be, I guess, the intermediary step between Maxwell and Volta. Kind of confusing, but, okay, we can go with that. What does this really mean? Well, it means that Pascal is still going to kick but there are some problems with HPM, and that is essentially ECC, known as Error Correcting Code. Now, this does reduce memory performance and overhead. However, it didn't. Re Nvidia have been less than forthcoming when it's actually saying, well, how much does this affect it? Like 5%, 10%, 55%? Obviously, I'm just throwing out arbitrary numbers, but the fact of the matter is, we just have to guess at the moment. But Pascal is going to be essentially built for the ground up to deliver double digit single precision TFLOPs performance and they also want to work on mixed precision. In other words, it's going to be a lot better at compute than what current Maxwell architecture is, which it's got to be said Maxwell was not the greatest when it came to compute orientated tasks. It also goes without saying for the gamers amongst us that DirectX 12 is going to be pretty much completely supported, at least supposedly with Pascal, and it's going to have at least support for DirectX 12 underscore 1 or above. Unfortunately, we don't know all of the details yet because obviously this chip is still in production. Now, we do know that Pascal has started to ship out to be tested. Now the test units, as far as we are aware, have only featured HPM1. That's not indicative of the final release of the GPU. It is simply for testing purposes. They're probably testing, you know, heat, power consumption. You know, does the actual, actual you know, raw silicon need any tweaking? Are there any errors in the, you know, the production? Do they need to adjust the design? Is it actually really going to be ready? Well, yes, it's looking like it, and all indications will point to the GPU finally being released at some point early 2016. Hopefully. Well, I'm not going to say early, but let's say the first half. People's predictions keep changing. Does that mean, on the other hand, that, you know, you shouldn't buy your GTX 980 Ti or your Fury X or whatever now. Uh, as usual, things can certainly slip in production. Personally speaking, if it's like six to eight months minimum before a new GPU is released, I would probably just buy now. On the other hand, if you're going to be spending a hell of a lot of money and you could get away with not doing it, then maybe, maybe not. It depends how much disposable income you've got, I guess. But for now, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care and have a good day. Bye.